Everybody loves flowers, and I even love wearing them. And because of the vast range of types, unique shapes, and spectacular colours, it is, is it any wonder that many a ceramic artist and potter has chosen a flower of some kind to enhance and decorate or shape their wares. And the potter's craft goes back a long way, as you know, and uh, so do some of the examples that I'm going to show you today. You would think that it would be difficult to produce functional pottery using the shape of a flower, but it's remarkable just how many different types of vessels have been made in the shape of a flower. I will show you the functional wares later in the video, but I will begin by showing and talking about uh, the lovely pieces that have been decorated with floral designs uh, for many centuries, and the techniques used for this are on glaze enamelling, under glaze painting and transfer printing. And the process, as I said, goes back a long way. Have a look at some of these. On the left is an early terracotta pot from a North American Pueblo Indian culture bearing fine floral decorations. And on the right is an early 11th century Chinese pot with floral symbols. We tend to think of China as where the beginning of fine stoneware and particularly porcelain originated and can always look there for early examples. Flowers in the Chinese culture uh, symbolise everything from celebration days, specific months and seasons to various characteristics. Flowers are not always depicted uh, realistically but artists seek to communicate in particular messages through symbolism and allegory. On this beautiful dish from the Ming Dynasty period, the artist has painted in underglazed cobalt blue six of the Chinese flowers which have special meaning and are noted on the right. And on this delightful stem cup, stages of flower to fruit of the pomegranate, which is a symbol of fertility, have been skillfully painted. These are later 19th century examples. On glazed decoration of chrysanthemum and prunus on the moon flask and the lotus on the ginger jar. Here are two beautifully decorated Turkish Iznik plates from the late 17th century. And on the left is an English Delftware and on the right, a Dutch Delfware charger with floral decoration. I will further illustrate what I'm saying about uh, floral decoration going back a long way in time uh, by showing and uh, talking about a few pieces in my own collection and the, the types of decoration used on them. This French faience plate is early 19th century and is decorated with a cornucopia uh, of flowers. Uh, and the next piece is a bow sauce boat of around about 1765. And its decoration is hand painted uh, in underglazed blue cobalt. Now we'll look at some transfer prints of the same age. This Worcester jug and uh, this lovely little pickle dish, uh, the uh, butter tub with a lovely floral decoration and another Worcester plate with a, a, a transfer print called the pine cone and apple uh, pattern. This is a mid 19th century Wedgwood uh, underglaze uh, transfer printed about the, um, it's called Flow Blue. This uh, Dr. Wall Worcester uh, scale blue plate has, a, has floral decorations in the reserves, inspired by pottery from the Meissen factory in Germany. Uh, this is a, an enameled, beautiful spray of flowers on a blind oil pattern plate. And this plate is a copy of the Japanese Kakeimon style of decoration. Um, this uh, later plate, a mid-19th century, from the Handley Pottery Company, 
has a, a very nice uh, spray of flowers in iron red, enameled. And this one is a spode plate and the decoration is called uh, tobacco leaf. And this lovely little tea bowl shows a very simple uh, enameled rose decoration. And the Japanese saucer here has a very uh, pleasant uh, enamel decoration on it. Before I move on from painted floral decoration, many factories throughout the world have produced some magnificent services, which are usually referred to as botanical services. The well-known and magnificent Flora Danica service was created by the Royal Copenhagen uh, porcelain factory in Denmark at the end of the 18th century to depict all the botanical species in Scandinavia. The first uh, Floridanica service was ordered by King Charles VII as a diplomatic reconciliation gift for Catherine the Great of, uh, of Russia, the Empress of Russia. Other factories producing well-known botanical services are Coalport, Ainsley, Royal Vienna and of course Royal Albert which is very well known and uh, there are many others. Now we move on to ceramic pieces which are made purely for decoration. The Capodimonte factory in Naples in Italy is particularly renowned for its production of decorative baskets of flowers uh, from the latter part of the 19th century. I have one of these in my collection. Um, dust catches, of course, but flowers, these flowers. are always handmade uh, by potters, very skilled at this deft craft. You can see the potter's fingerprints on the petals quite distinctly. And here are three more examples from Capodimonte Victorini in Italy. And these two are from the English factories of Ainsley and Colport. Another use for decorative floral sculptures is for funerary purposes, mainly to decorate grave sites. Colourful, yes, weather resistant, yes, but of course not unbreakable. Have a look at these remarkable pieces. An exquisite adornment of any gravesite are these lovely pieces. Moving on now to functional wares, we first look at some ceramic tiles which bear floral design and decoration. The Art Nouveau period produced some extremely lovely tiles and there are many others as well. The example on the left shows an arrangement of four tiles to create the pattern and on the right a vase of flowers is painted on several tiles. These are Japanese and on the left shows relief moulding and tube lining and relief work decorate the one on the right. A hand painted tile in the style of William Morris and a very colourful Turkish tile. Hand modelled poppies and a tile decorated in the Majolica fashion from Italy. And two delightful English Delft tiles from the 1740s. Modelled flowers have been used to adorn ceramic pieces for many centuries too. Let's have a look at a few of these now. Of course, vases would be probably the first thing you would think of. And there are many examples to be seen on other functional wares as well.
had these jardiniers and pedestals during my career as a practicing potter. I mentioned tube lining when we were looking at tiles and probably the most well-known factory for decorating their vases in this method in which the design is outlined in trailed slip clay is the Moorcroft factory. William Moorcroft created designs for McIntyre's or Raelian ware, uh, a range of high Victorian pottery which had transfer printed and enamel decoration in bold red, blue and gold colours. And then he also developed the Art Nouveau influenced Florian ware, uh, the tube lined wares which are very, very well known these days. And here are two more recent tube lined decorated Moorcroft vases. When we talk about functional wares, we always think of, well I always do, think of teapots and there are many in this theme of flowers. I just happen to have this one by Dan Samuels uh, in a design called Ginger Lily. And uh, here is a setting that goes with it. And here are two more lovely flower teapots. And now for some other functional wares. Uh, I'll save my breath here and just show you some delightfully colourful and imaginative pieces. Two uh, sauce boats or perhaps cream jugs and now for a range of cups and saucers. Possibly the most bizarre, or maybe it's even the most imaginative use of flower design for ceramics, which has a very important function, are these urinals. Yes, I said urinals, by an American potter, Clark Sorensen. They would make a very colourful addition to any public bathroom, I'm sure. Take a look. Ah, and who'd be game to step up to this one? Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing.